Good evening, guys. Kind of Tortoise Capital Nightly Strategy Podcast for Friday, March 18th, 2022. Take two. <laughs> so this is uh, Tim. Let's call this trader Tim. And uh, on the second day after starting the foundations course with no other experience with our material, he offered this first live trade for review because he read what I said that the best thing you could do to learn fast and learn best is to start with a lesson, start trading, post your chart for feedback with strict risk control to mark it up correctly, to figure out what kind of coaching advice I would give him, commit to that in writing, and then compare what I actually say to what he thought I was going to say. And then that would be uh, really powerful. So let's see what he did and let's see what you think. Well, he notices that yesterday, well, first of all, I'm going to notice that he marked it up correctly. This was the end of the day. And this was the start of the day. So he's got that marked up correct. He's got all of the indicators correctly marked. So he's prepared to trade. Uh, he goes back to yesterday's sideways quiet channel near the end of the day and identifies a 10 point minimum manageable risk box. Uh, he notices there's no gap today. He sees the high of the day and marks off an MMRB on the downward move as it breaks the PSAR. So he enters short and then covers when there is a spike up back to the PSAR where he exits with a 0.2 win. He then, and he called that one uh, a K2 PSAR, which, which was correct because there's a high, there's a lower high and there's the PSAR break. So absolutely correct. He notes that it's also starting a Z3 pinch breakdown because of the pinch. So he's on that one already. Um, he takes the trade two as a, um, as a continuation of the upside move when it breaks the PSR. He notices he calls that a fake one go two, which is correct because this move didn't fail far enough to be massive. Uh, so he plays that trade. He holds it. Uh, when it rolls over a second time and hits the PSR, he's out. He tightened that up on a VWAP rejection. The, the price did not go through the VWAP. How can you learn all this in two days? Magic. So he takes the 0.5 loss like he's supposed to. He stays out of the chop. He waits for another Z3 pinch. He sees a higher low. He gets a Z3 pinch breakout. He watches it run up along the Z3, gets a, um, an exasperation move to Z3, which then closes in a falling star doji, takes a two bar low in order to minimize the give back, cash is 2.4 on a two bar low, banks 2.2 for the day. So far, oh, there's another one, a caught a two, which gives him another 0.2. So he nets 2.2 for the day and done. Uh, correct. So what I said was, um, nice work. And uh, he should just lather, rinse, and repeat. Notice he did that all in the morning. So that's a morning day. I said 10 points is proper because you'll cut losing trades and ride winners long enough to pay off. And I said, that's pretty good. You applying the foundational principles within three days of signing up for the course and already posting your homework in public with commentary. I said, find the spreadsheet in the room using the search function so you can start recording your R multiples and build your histogram for studying in sets of 30 and 100 using Luke C's perfect example and start with excellence right away. He said, yep, you're right. Sooner is better. 
Uh, best to detect errors and mistakes early and correct them before they become bad habits. If you listen to a guy named Jeff given a master class on bass, he tells the kid he's teaching, notice the mistakes, but don't, wor don't worry about them. That's just where the learning is occurring. It marks off the area for learning. So then I said, since I uh, like to write once and use many, hey, gang, here's your, here is a trader's exercise, number 30 in the Creativity 202 course. And here's your situation. Suppose we had a new trader. Let's just call him Tim. And let's say that he signed up for the foundations course two days ago and that today he already posted his first trade series case study on the S&P 500 and is asking for coaching feedback. Take a look at the chart he attached in his commentary and let's evaluate with a coach's eye in this practical exercise, which is lesson number 30 in the Creativity 202 Fletcher Treatment for Traders course. Uh, we should mention that Professor Fletcher is the world's authority on creativity and story science. He's, tra he's developing training programs across DOD and corporate America and Hollywood. And this is the only course in the world that has his direct design input, along with my 27 years experience of teaching traders to trade, plus my experience with uh, developing leaders with the adult learning model. That's the only place in the world you can get that. And you can get it for 2000 bucks now before it goes up to five, probably on one June, not earlier than one June. Uh, this trader's exercise is an effort to develop the coach's eye. So I ask you to take these steps. What do you see? What questions would you ask of Tim if you saw his chart? And what kind of coaching would you give him? In other words, what kind of feedback? What do you think that I would say? And then compare what I actually said to what you thought I would say. And then compare what you're thinking and saying to what you think I will say. And then compare what you thought I would say to what I did say. And then what are your insights from the overall experience of looking at these different bodies of coaching knowledge? Journal that. And then I want to know what action steps in what priority are you making as a result of this exercise, if any, in your learning journal, if you have one, and in your to-do list, if you have one. And I would say, fail early fail often, fail forward, gain balance, learn to walk the way babies do. It's not that hard. Well, if that's where uh, Tim was, let's call him Tim. Let's see where you might be at the end of two years of doing that every day on camera in our archives and in our hybrid trading course. If you were the fractal trader, Ken H, who gives us beautiful day and swing trade frames every Saturday night to show us what he's doing to include his open trades so he can get coaching for me every night, which is available to you just for showing up. Ridiculous. So he said, hey, you know that, that uh, square space that we've been trading on the daily charts since it was at 100? and is now at 133, yeah, 33% move in three days. You mean that one? Yeah. The one that we've been swing trading and intraday turbo trading? Yeah, that one. He said, well, I set it up again and I did the usual. So I set up the two hour battle drill to protect the gains that we had. And it didn't fail out of that far enough to trigger that stop. And it moved a risk box off the PSAR flip low of the day. So I entered it, got to no lose plus dinner for two, put the second one in when it didn't even penetrate the PSAR, put the third one in when it didn't even penetrate the PSAR, and took the sniper exit like I'm supposed to. And he cashed an additional 8R just on the turbo swing trade intraday. And I expect that he's going to say he still has a swing position in it totally paid for with markets money. 
because it has cleared all of the resistance and it's still active and he's framed it to get up to 150, which is the next critical state. But we'll see what he says about that tomorrow and I'll give him coaching feedback when he posts his chart properly formatted, correctly commented uh, that you can listen to tomorrow. All of those coaching sessions are in the archives, by the way. That's a good reason to be a patron because you have access to two and a half years of nightly coaching all the way through COVID. Well, let's see what we have. Um, all right, so let's take a look at uh, market health check. And uh, we noticed that this, uh, this turning point in the market just might be a turning point. We know at least that we have an owl entry because now the dragon has rolled up along with the RL90 extension and we had the P1 and the RLXD. So all the conditions for an owl entry in these last two days are in place. We got the SSC entry here with a standard risk. We're holding about two R in hand on just a market swing trade if you follow in that rule. Close strongly at the top of the range right at the edge of Z1. So uh, that is a move to protect. I mean, it's nice to be enthusiastic and to keep following it all the way up and hope that it gets through Z2, through the uh, RL270, the Z3, and all the way to the all-time high about 50 days ago, from which we are still enjoying not a 7.5% sell-off, which is better than the full... 13% sell off that it had, but uh, you know, we're all right. Uh, so all systems look go there. Uh, shifting to the sectors, the S&P comes in at 0.78. Diamonds were the worst performer at 0.5. The Russell was slightly better at 1%. Treasuries at 1.22. It held support at 130. So 140 is next. Emerging markets maintained their juice at 1.4, and the Qs had the widest, easiest move to believe in, up 2%. Let's just look at the ones that were worse so that we don't forget to do that, because those will be the ones uh, which could get crushed on Monday uh, if the market keeps going up or might be ready to resume as defensive plays if the market reverses. So uh, that would include uh, materials were slightly worse at 0.6, blended commodities 0.47 on weakness in energy. Um, we're going to go, remind me to go take a look at Robin Hood. Wait till you see that chart on the dailies. Holy mackerel. Finance, staples, uh, up a quarter. Agriculture and wheat and precious metals basically flat. Energy and oil exploration just below sea level. Simon Property Group off 0.4. Uh, the VIX down 0.4, or uh, down 4%, I should say. Um, now, individual targets that suffered the most. Uh, U.S. Steel gave back some of its gains from yesterday, which it was a special yesterday, gave back 4.6. Cliff was basically flat, Robin Hood 0.37. So not much on the downside at all. Let's look at what worked. Uh, started off with the lumber pair cut in wood up about a percent. Uh, oil uh, up 1.3. Uh, lithium and tech 1.8 and 2%. Consumer discretionary 0.21 uh, Mexico Brazil clean energy continue its nice little run here and uh, see our comments earlier about why I think that is it that's the turning point because people are already starting to price in the second and third order effect of a world recognizing that we better make clean energy work unless you want to stay hostage to Russia and China for the rest of your airborne life uh, that's going to pump all the favored stocks that previously went to 130. So that's still on sale dramatically. 
uh, biotech, Bitcoin futures, ArcG. Hey, I'll tell you what, when you look at ArcG and ArcK, don't stay short that too long. Uh, Fangs, 3.4. Blockchain, 3.5. Uh, Moonshots, Arc, uh, uh, Innovation, 4.5. Marijuana, 4.7. Global Future of Finance, 5%. Uh, blended Large Cap Commodity, or Blended Large Cap Crypto, excuse me. Ethereum, 5.6. Um, Bocked Holdings, 6.7. Um, their CEO was just on Bloomberg tonight, had a lot of good things to say. That's an easy infrastructure play for crypto. Just saying. They're going to get a lot of government money. Uh, and then the winners of individual target targetry today, Squarespace, third day in a row, best performer, 9.9%. Find the movers, trade the pattern, manage the risk. 8.2 in Rivian. 5.9 in PayPal, Coinbase 4.9, Tesla 3.88 to close above the key psychological level of 900. You know, I just watched a little short movie on his um, $15,000 house in a box with all the high tech things that you would expect from the inventor of Tesla. Uh, I could live in it. I like it. So I'll and his spare time just saw world housing. Apple, 2%. Microsoft, 1.76. Devon Energy, 1.3. So plenty to choose from going forward. Yeah, so that was all the notes that I gave Tim. I think we saw those already. Well, let's look at the uh, traders today first. Let's get that knocked out. Uh, you saw Tim's work. If you don't frame that and make that a flashcard and be inspired by German engineering, Griff doing a great job as an intern. What he's doing for us is the Collapsing Dragon Challenge, the Kata 2 Challenge, the SSC Challenge. He's showing you what the mechanical signals should be getting, he thinks, and he's pretty good, but waiting to get some coaching feedback from me. And this is a chance to check your work against his work. That's, that's free chicken. So let's see what he's got here. This was before the day. Or no, this was starting at the, uh, when he began looking at it, but he did notice that, yeah, that would have been the spot for COD two. Uh, but he's really just looking at CDs right now. He will post the other solutions tomorrow. Um, I, I would take that as a uh, collapsing dragon. I think we should gotten paid more on that than this, but he got paid. Um, then I think on the reversal, you could get here, but that's still pretty good. And he got paid. This would have been the SSC the, in the usual way. Um, I think this was close. This was a collapsing dragon on the dragon itself. He didn't wait for the, and after that kind of a move, I don't blame him. That's a shot I would take. I would also take this shot again. I wouldn't stick around that long though. I would, I would get out at the same place I got out before. So don't take the extra hit. That's 0.3 compared to that 0.3 that you don't have to take, especially on the second failure in a row. And then on the third, yeah, so that's this one. Um, this one gets paid. I think with the max excursion here, I wouldn't let this scratch. I'd want to get, I had three opportunities to get paid. That would be your, on the other one, you'll see that's the Kata 2. There's a second Kata 2. That's, I think, uh, 
uh, uh, very similar to the one Tim got in the S and P mini. Um, I like this as the CD wasn't there. So there wasn't much today, but with a little bit of foresight, this doesn't even lose money today. And you can already see that on an up day, uh, the easier moves were all on the upside and that's going to crush on uh, when you take a look at all the patterns in the, in the foundations. So appreciate uh, Griff's good, solid work uh, as an intern. And that's why he gets the creativity course for free. He's doing the work for the team. Uh, Wojo started trading here, stays out of the chop, waits for the breakout above the uh, VWAP, has a nice concise short. Um, I think you might have taken the short here. He waits for the resumption. Now, when you're that far in the green, we gave back 80%. Get paid a little more, especially one, two, three, four chances to fail, and it didn't. This is failure to fail further. That is information. So get paid more. This is the one he missed. That would have been the standard risk box. Massive goodness. He, wait, he did get the Kata 2. Took the second position, so quickly got out. This was the owl entry, by the way. Um, re, he gets paid. Uh, this was worth a shot. Stuck around maybe too long, but it, that was all one bar, so it's kind of hard. I don't mind two shots here. The third one I don't take. Um, this is one that we should have made money on and under normal conditions. He'd make between two and three. Uh, with tightening up the shot group on the winners, and staying focused. So you're right on the edge of, uh, of consistent uh, routine production performance. So keep going. Arch with the Aussie, the five minute Aussies. Correct on the rollover, breaks down, collapsing dragon, perfect. On the five minutes, they can afford to take like the one bar reversal, because why not? Stays out of the chop, sees the rising. Oh, it didn't fail down, so he gets the long with the standard risk. I think you stuck around too long. If you'd have done the same thing you did before, you get out here and you get an improvement of a probably 0.2. Sees higher lows, and there's a cot of two, correctly identified, crushes it. Here was a chance for a second entry. Um, if you have the second entry, you'd have wanted to get out here. Um, he took he took the, um, uh, the PSAR exit, but still nets 4.5 for the day, 4.6. So uh, that ain't bad. That ain't bad. Five minute Aussies in the house. Let's look at the uh, weekend report. Yeah, I'm in the 90th hour of my fast, so I'm a little energetic today. Um, let's see, let's review sheets. So uh, sideways normal. The two and the 10 day are popping. Uh, the risk Z still risk off and neutral. This was a reliable kind of Kata 2 style on the risk Z. The um, ETF2 exposure increases to 20%. Emerging markets in Latin America are the two that are above their four month moving average. Go figure that. There's Latin America and there's emerging markets. We're still in Latin America. 
monthly market health check. I went back a little bit longer. This was the um, long-term capital management financial crisis. This was the second savings and loan. This was COVID. That's the potential start of World War III. What, me worry? <laughs> Notice the, uh, when everything crossed back here, um, everything crossed above, the price crossed above the 270. Here's where the 90 crossed the 270 to the upside and has never really looked back. That's a pretty good long-term trade. For those of you that are in the sound of my voice that are interested in long-term capital growth. Yeah, that's how you do that. That's how you get back in. Yeah, my brother says, do I show what the advice is on bull, bear, and sideways? Yep. Uh, the nine day, here's the COVID. Uh, if there's a one, two, three entry, it's supporting. To, I, my stop would be rock solid right there at 435. Do not let it go below 435. No matter what the good men say. Weekly, here's, uh, here's 435. That's the little boost. There's the PSAR flip. There's the all-time high, 480. Don't let it go below 435. Uh, Three-day rising tide. We talked about that last week, and we they, we got the follow-through. There's the PSAR flip these last couple of days. Here's 435. The stop is right below the three-bar low. I could even go 437 on that one, if I'm being honest. I wouldn't be offended by the previous PSAR at 440 if you're a shorter term trader we've seen the daily uh in etf 13 here's three that are above their four month moving average um ewa the aussie is not in um the 10 indexes of the world that's what, there's only two of them on the uh and that's why that's at 20%. We have the Aussie in this one because it represents a commodity exposure. So Latin America was only up 3.87 today. It's up in the, well, we've owned it for more than three months, but it's already in the uh, BMR 13, but that thing's up 22% on that position in uh, BMR 13. You could do worse. ETF 22 adds the XL series. Uh, you can see that uh, the energy may have peaked. Our normal stop is solid on that one. That one has been owned for almost six months. Consumer discretionary is roaring back. Pay attention to that one and tech is roaring back. That's your default long side growth posture, carefully managed risk, but ready to exploit the rebounds. Um, ETF 32, again, you see all the ones that hadn't been dominating, all the defensive plays, all giving back. But then Brazil and Latin America, still crushing it in the indexes. You know, guys, we were on that early we were on that move early when it refused to fail three months ago. You can go back and check the tape. Cautiously optimistic on it, we were. Consumer discretionary, still looking good. The clean energy is trying really hard to make that run. I'm, I am um, skeptical on the long-term goodness on China right there. Dow 30. Um, Chevron, you can see along with the give backs and energy, American Express in the financials. Wow. Visa in the financials. Wow. Boeing in the defense space. 
JP Morgan in the financials. Financials, anyone? Uh, if you're a bottom feeder, there's a value play for you. JP Morgan. The, um, watch XLF and FAS, the triple leveraged. Um, finance is making its little comeback in here, like I just said. Utilities is history. Energy had been king, but finance is the new leader. If we think that energy is, gonna, is going to fade, finance is the next logical leader here as the U.S. is flexing its muscle with economic sanctions, the only weapon we have left. Um, we'll see. All of the energies are starting to suffer, so I would be cautious on those. They are already fully engaged, but Brazil is green and white. Green and white is was good, now great, exploit new strength, and you can turbo those because that's new leadership. Australia, kind of the same thing. White and yellow was weak, now it's good. It's a chance to do, to exploit new strength, and yes, you can turbo that, and there's new momentum that has now pushed it from below average to above average. It's the same pattern, white and green, as we see in green and white, but just one quantum level lower, right? That's how that works. And we would see the same thing in small cap value in that little, yeah, sneaky good. Um, looking at ATR percentage, The symbols that are in the green are both liquid and volatile enough to trade. So regional banks, China, 4.7. Uh, gold miners and biotech, oil, gas exploration, semis and tech space, and energy, both directions. Shift to the daily. Uh, tons of dojis today, only two auto framers in Chevron. If the energy sector resumes, that would be your place to look. Wait to see evidence. Coca-Cola, 3.2 to 1. Oh, and ExxonMobil, 8.7. I didn't see that. Third one. A few dojis today. A lot of warnings about being overheated on this rebound, we are mindful that we are in sideways normal conditions, but we're paying attention in both directions. Short, sharp moves in either directions are the order of the day. Um, emerging markets, uh, Asia list Japan, I should say, massive goodness today, 1.8%. This turnaround in clean energy just may have some legs after all. It's strong on the one day, 10 day, and one month. So, first sign of weakness in oil exploration. Uh, but there was already a little bounce in oil today. So, it's, I'm not ready to call it a top quite yet. Auto framer, standard framing, swing trading one day at a time. That's the fractal. Uh, the fractal flipper, the fractal swing trader, the turbo trader. That's how you do it. And uh, the yellow zone traders. Paying particular attention to the range men. One third to one quarter of that is a good place to start with your minimum manageable risk box. Yep. Sideways normal trade, intraday and uh only the best swing trades with the, uh, and I would start them off as turbo if I could and be ready to get paid. Bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Like Ken H is swing trade in square space right now. He should be 90% focused on preserving the profits in that three day swing of 33%. 
rather than trying to be greedy and get more. He's got a patient discipline where he pulls dozens of hours a week out of the market. This is not the time to get greedy and, and silly. Lots of spring breaking out all over. Those are the turnaround plays. Take your pick of all the goodies. You can see what the anomaly is right there in uh, Chevron and Exxon Mobil on the 10 day. They've been so good. Uh, and then really take your pick. Everything worked today. No brainers. Still, I'm going to be the coyote, the master opportunist. Hard to catch them. Four days marching. Caught a two in the slope of the RL30. Broke above its 10 period moving average at a distance more than one standard deviation from average. That's a sign of a potential turning point right there. And we're watching it happen. Trading it should be. Test got to the far side of the river, just as you would expect. What happens at the far side of the river? Reality. No such thing as easy money, but if there ever was, that was it. This is one that looked like that, but couldn't even get to the far side. Here's one that got to the far side. That's the last time that it really broke through in a big way. So it can ride this thing. What's interesting, though, is it looks like this kind of a turning point. And that was the time that it made the big move. So I'm not saying that this is impossible. That could certainly happen. But we're going to take make that as a measured, risk-managed, framed trade in sideways normal markets. That's what we do. That's everything I want to cover about that. Is that everything I want to say? No. Feels like quite enough. Yeah, that's everything I want to cover. I'm going to talk about this uh, sniper uh, exercise tomorrow. That's going to be in the Q&A session. I'll be talking about the sniper. Um, so there we are. That's everything for tonight. You can have that. I'm not going to talk about that one. Leadership, it's important. Everybody should have some. I'll talk about that tomorrow. Take care, guys. We shall see you tomorrow.